Hello everybody and welcome once again to Letterbox Book Club. I am Mackenzie. And I'm Claire. And today we will be discussing Not the Witch You Wed by April Asher. I shall launch right into the blurb. Absolutely, go for it. Magicless witch Violet Maxwell wants nothing to do with Alpha Wolf Shifter Lincoln Thorne, the man who broke her fragile teenage heart. But when the two of them are forced by arcane supernatural laws to find maids, Violet and Lincoln agree to fake date their way to a fake mating in order to conjure themselves some time. The joke's on them. When old feelings make a reappearing appearance along with Violet's magic, they both realise there's nothing fake about their feelings, but there are old secrets and looming threats that could snatch away their happily ever after again. One thing's for sure, magic doesn't make dating and love any easier. In Not the Witch You Wed, oop, that's it. <laughs> Finish the compliment. (laughs) (laughs) In Not the Witchy Wed, April Asher brings all the hilarity and sweet sexy moments you love in a romantic comedy, plus a fun dose of magic to this spellbinding new series about sexy single and supernatural in New York City. It was like the same font, so I just kept reading. (laughs) Oh, but that's cool though. Show thoughts, feelings, emotions. I thought this book was fun and incredibly delightful. I had a fun time reading it. Um, It's a fun supernatural romance. It's like, as the blurb said, it's like a second love, uh, second chance love romance as well type of thing. And I almost pulled a you in regards to the blurb, because the only time I read the blurb was when, a while ago, when you bought the book, you sent screenshots of it through Messenger. Mm. Um, and then I completely forgot about their past, like, uh, history. So when oh. I when it got to that point in the book, I'm like, I thought it was like a little nice little twist or whatever, but I completely <laughs> forgot that it was actually mentioned in the blurb. So yeah, that was fun. Uh, Violet is hilarious. Lincoln is charming. He's awesome. It's just I don't know. It's just a delightful book. I really enjoyed it, and I like the you know the friendships and the familial bonds and stuff. Um, a nice. Big th- a big theme of the book is also trust, which is very nice. So yeah, enjoyed it. What about you, Kenzie? Um, well, I'm just looking at the cover because I read the Kindle version. Um, I didn't realise that that's what Lincoln is meant to look like. <laughs> and, like, oh, he's no. ugly on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> um, I enjoyed it. I, it took me a while to start reading it because um, I was coming off the back of From Blood and Ash and I was very much all up in that world and I was ready to leave. Um, but I enjoyed it and by the end of it I wanted... Um, a little bit more mm, yeah me too because i was reading it and then um in like because the kindle tells you how much longer you've had left or how much you've gone through or whatever and i was just reading one night and then suddenly i was 60 percent through and i was like what in the world <laughs> smashing through it um yeah it was fun i like really i like modern magic rom-coms because it's also yeah based in the magical city of new york city as well uh-huh Re- new york city will always be romanticized for me <laughs> <laughs> Not only in magic, but just in regular human life. Yes. Do you have any qualms with the book? I, I have one, but it's a little bit kind of unconditional, unconventional. Okay. Um, it's just there's swearing in the book, but then there's then they also make the verbs or the adjectives like like a cliche, not sweary type of word, if that makes sense. Like like hex me instead of like oh, oh yeah me, or something like that. Yeah. But like it's like you're already swearing, but like you may as well you know keep swearing. You know, I don't know, I just found it a bit quirky and a bit cringy almost sometimes, but that, that's my only qualm, I think, from the top of my head. I have qualms. Maybe this can be the next seg- the segment after Thoughts, Feelings, Emotions. Just go through some qualms, if any. But I'm very looking forward to hearing what you have to say, Kenzie. So, Violet um, is explained and described as, you know, this sensual, curvy, you know, average female woman. Fine. Great. Almost immediately upon meeting her, we are told that she has DD boobs, Mm. which is fine, but it's like you've already described her as like having curves and stuff. Like, I don't need to know the precise size of her breasts. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was just like, why does it always have to be like, and it's always, I have double D boobs. Like, well done. (laughs) So, yeah, it's just like, I don't know why we need to highlight that when we already know that she's an average curving woman. Um, Good job. And I hated how in um, the like the blurb she's violet she's introduced as violet but then it's almost she's then almost exclusively referred to as vi Mm. which is fine because that's a nickname but yeah i don't know just something about that annoyed me how it was like violet maxwell violet maxwell violet uh, 
Yep, yep, I get that. I almost every sort of perhaps modern romance type of book, like every character and their friendship groups, there's always the nicknames from their uh from their yeah, friends and family and stuff. Like Rose is called Ro and it's like we don't need she doesn't really need a nickname, or Olive is like Ollie, but that's And then I should think it's like, okay, that would be cool because you're referring to Violet as Vi, but then you need to stick with Vi or Violet or then yeah, continue to call Rose and Olive Ro and Ollie. Yeah. And even with Lincoln, it's like Link. Link. It's like, yeah. not everyone has to have a nickname, I feel. Yeah, pick a lane. <laughs> but that's also kind of hypocritical, because like, you're Mackenzie, but we call you Kenzie all the time. Yeah, because no one ever calls me Mackenzie. <laughs> no, that's yeah. a fair qualm. Any other qualms? Uh, some might pop up, but no. <laughs> it's a great point. Yeah, sometimes, even yeah, in descriptions of like curvy girls, like you don't need to enunciate like their boob size and like it almost seems like it becomes their personality as well. Yeah. Like every time, like whether it's like out in regards to any sort of outfit change or shopping, like it's always mentioned, you know, are the boobs going to fit or the girls are yeah. out as well. Yeah. So yeah, probably a very unnecessary detail. Yeah. And then it just um, becomes, I also like to put a disclaimer in here, everybody, that um, I'm a large breasted woman, so I can, I can have a foot to stand on. Anyway. <laughs> Because, yeah, then every outfit is always like, oh, like, I think there was one where she's wearing, like, a crop top or something, and it was like, oh, if she pulls it down oh, yeah, too yeah. low, then her boobs are out, but if, like, if she lets it ride up, then, like, her midriff is showing. And it's like, that's fine, own it, like, let the woman own it. It's it's weird in, yeah, especially this fantasy world, like, those details just need to be brought. Yeah, I'm trying, if you're going to write this vivacious, curvy, beautiful woman, let her own it. Like, women don't need to be self-conscious about their bodies all the time. Yeah, and especially just as Violet as a character, like, she is very much capable of, like, standing up to herself, especially because yeah. being magicless, she inherently is disrespected by everyone in, like, the supernatural community. So I feel like she wouldn't let any sort of insecurity Yeah, and she's shown shine. to, yeah, she stands up for herself and she's not afraid to be outspoken. So why is she suddenly this babbling mess of, oh, I'm self-conscious? Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> But anyway, we'll get right into all this good stuff. So I was thinking we'll kick off, we'll kind of talk about like the Violet family, which kind of little politics, and uh -huh. then we'll do the same with Lincoln, uh -huh. and then and then we'll just dive right into like the rest. Do we want to talk about the princess nickname? It, it will come up. Like, I know you absolutely hate that nickname. Mm, I, hate, I have I hate, thought. I, hate, I hated it. I don't know. Because... It makes sense if the character is a literal princess type of thing. You know, like, if, like, she's an actual, yeah, like, heir yeah. or whatever. But, but like, and princess... Alright, let's talk about it now. We may as well use <laughs> Like, the connotation with princess is, like, she's spoiled, she gets everything re she wants. But, like, Violet is far from that. She is magicless. She is disrespected on the daily. Like, she, so, there's nothing princess about her. Yeah, this is the thing. In Good Girl Complex, I didn't like it because it was a way of, like, I don't know, subtle bullying. Because it was Cooper, yeah, insinuating, oh, you get everything you want. Like, you're treated like a princess, blah, 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 blah. And that's why I didn't like it. Because I'm like, well, that's not a cute nice nickname to give her because you're being rude to her about it about her status in life but i don't know i kind of liked it in this one because he was like i want to treat you like a princess oh right yep yep uh. and also in the technical grand scheme of things she is like the even though she's magicless she's still the first born and there's some sense of speciality into that as well mm -hmm. yeah i agree with that I still found it, like, annoying, though. Because oh. that's, that's, it's the connotation that I think about, yeah, like, yeah, she's spoiled or gets everything that she wants, but we know that yeah. no, she she doesn't. She very much doesn't. She, she doesn't fulfil that type of characteristic. But, yeah, and it was always in, like, yeah, good humour banter. It wasn't in, a, like, a contempt way or a snarky way at all. Mm. So, kicking kicking on with the story, I guess. Yeah, let's get Follow... into the actual plot. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have a bitch and move on. So the story follows two perspectives in this book. We follow Violet Maxwell, which is who is a witch, a part of a witch triad with her s sisters, Olive and uh -huh. Rose. Her triplet sisters. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> and she seemingly has no magic up until this point in life. And being the eldest, she would have been trained to become this prime apparent of the witches. Her grandma is currently the prime witch. So now that responsibility has fallen onto Rose, which is the second eldest daughter. Yep. 
So her responsibility is to get married into a witch bond, which is when you marry someone, I guess, of equal or greater power because they anchor your power so that you don't blow up the world. Allegedly. (laughs) Allegedly. (laughs) And so due to, like, a technicality, despite Violet seemingly having no magic, as I just said, um, the Supernatural Council insists, despite all that, she is to form a witch bond regardless, just because of the law. And she is given three months to figure her shit out. <laughs> uh-huh. And then also Lincoln, who is the alpha of the wolf pack, the wolf sh- or the shifter pack. Yeah, I got confused for a second. I was like, is it a wolf pack or an actual shifter pack? It's a wolf it's- pack, I think, because then there's different animals, but they're, and they're all part of their own packs, because they're leaders. And, uh, yeah. Uh, yep, 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 yep. So yeah, yeah, so the individual species make up the North America pack, but Overall, they're, they're, the sh- they're a shifter pack as well. Yeah. Yeah, so he is the alpha of that pack. Um, and his 33rd birthday is coming up because we love threes in uh, Supernatural Law. I did not think about that. Are you serious? And the no. triad, there's three sisters. Uh, I, know, I know the triad, the three sisters thing, because of course. But the oh, 33rd and the birthday. And birthday and three months. Oh, I didn't get the three months. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um... Yeah, so so her birthday is coming up, and so you need to like go into a bond, like a mating bond, before your thirty third birthday or whatever. And so he and Violet are both like, "Oh shit, we need more time. Um, let's fake a date." Yes, because yeah, they lead they're leading a very sort of like parallel situation in terms of their separate species. Yeah, political marital arrangements need to happen, and so yeah, they're going to try and fool each other's communities in order to. Save their asses. Because they, because yeah, exactly. Lincoln's refusing to mate because he wants to find his true mate. Mate, yeah. And Violet is all like, well, I'm, I don't have no magic, so she doesn't need a witch bond in order to anchor her magic because she yeah. has none. And so we kick the story off at a wedding kind of, not wedding, uh, a bonding. I would say like an engagement ceremony. party. Yeah, yeah. 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 At, a, at like a snowfield, which is giving high school musical. <laughs> yeah, that is ski resort. Very much High School Musical. Sorry, I picked my face. <laughs> That's okay. Anyway, and yeah, Violet and Lincoln run into each other, and we find out, bow, 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 that they were teenage sweethearts, and they had plans to run away and stuff because Lincoln's father is an ass. Um, and then Lincoln left um, Violet high and dry and never showed up to their rendezvous. Yeah, and she's been kind of brokenhearted and pissed off at him ever since, which is fair, mm-hmm. which is very fair. But of course, we later learn that um, Lincoln had been like hexed into silence. He is not allowed to kind of speak of his reasons why he was unable to run away and and all that type of stuff because of his father. And of course, we'll talk about later on how it all comes into play. But so yeah, that's also frustrating as a reader. Like we know why Lincoln can't tell Violet what, yeah. ha- what really happened or the truth. And yeah, she's like begging him, and it's like <laughs> it's so frustrating. But it's great drama. Yes. Um, I was just going to say, I also, <laughs> I also thought there was going to be more of a role of him trying to undo the hex, like, himself as, like, a personal adventure. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I thought they're going to get to a point in the relationship where he's going to want to have to tell her, and then there'd be a little side mission for him to kind of undo the hex, but then that mm. never really occurred. But that was just my hope. But, yeah. True. Um. So after their initial meeting on the snowfields, where they literally barrel into each other <laughs> um it's revealed that like violet is kind of getting magic yeah she's getting little glowy hands and yeah, she's getting little sparks sp- sparky is emerging also this engagement is between rose maxwell and the european alpha i forget his first name but alpha beset yeah um he's it's, um oh, so nice guy. Stupid. yeah <laughs> so and yeah valentin um, Valentine. Oh, that's it. Yeah, Valentine Bissett. Mm-hmm. Not a nice fella. And really quickly, what Lincoln's trying to do, because he's also a member of the Supernatural Council, which um, Violet's grandmother, Edie, I think, mm-hmm. Edie, yep. is, is on as the Witch Primer. So all the other species as well, Supernatural species have yeah, a representative on the council. And so Lincoln represents the, the Shifters as the Alpha. <sighs> yeah. And he is trying, the shifters have an elder council, and he is trying to kind of change 
societal structures of that and the elder beliefs. Yeah, it's and it's also so that as a member of the pack, you have more say in decisions and stuff rather than just the elders bye making bye. all the decisions. Bye bye. Yep, <laughs> he said bye bye. bye. He's like, yeah, he's like, I don't, now he's leaving. He's like, I don't want you, bitch. <laughs> he just wanted a chippy. <laughs> <laughs> you got played. <laughs> So yeah, Lincoln is trying to make a quote-unquote shiftocracy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was early on, it was actually said democracy, but then Violet said it, and then it just became shiftocracy. I b- he really put his whole Lincoln into that one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he's trying to change old outdated systems, and then also Valentine, Valentine Bissette is trying to kind of undo it because he seems to benefit from having that overbearing sense of power. So Lincoln is trying to harbour some votes from other members of the Elder Council in order to sway in his favour, or other members of the other, like, packs around the world. So yeah, that's another, like, motivation for Lincoln as, you know, his mate bond uh, thing is arising. Yeah, um, did you think that it was going to go in his favour, or...? I feel like, because of the, at the end, it seems he really fucked up, you know? I yeah. Thought, I thought, kick a man while he's down, or kick a wolf while he's down. Yeah. Um, because of Edie is all like, you know, this is like the destiny for mm. like, even for Violet and Lincoln's relationship to kind of come back together as true mates and that type of stuff. Like, yeah. I this thought is what, that like, this is, this is the destiny that is followed. So it was always going to happen. Yeah. I thought that like, maybe like it would be like he'd lose it and then like at the last minute something would come in i mean but... that, i mean that's kind of almost what happened though yeah yeah true but yeah because yeah big theme on the destiny towards the end and yeah yes in the eyes of destiny this path was always going to occur so they were always going to succeed mm. and of course in a fun ro- like romance novel they're always going to succeed right yeah 100 percent, especially in a book that's like 300 pages <laughs> yeah exactly also oh quick qualm now that i think oh. about it oh um <sighs> I know, it's, I suppose it's different lore in this book compared to, like, the other fantasy books that we've read. But the fact that, like, for example, Lincoln's wolf is, like, a, its own personality. Yeah. It kind of annoyed me. Or, I don't know, it made me cringe a little bit because it's like, oh, the wolf was growling or holding back the wolf. And it's like, yeah. oh, I don't know. Oh, I think the, another clown I had as well, I think, like, he must have said his cock at one point or whatever. Like, he had to be, like, like he's like his wolf was like trying to come out and like his cock was hard as well or some shit and i was just like yes we understand that you're turned on by her we don't need to be told yeah <laughs> or at least be enunciated that the wolf is yeah and it's always like I, yeah and it's always that it should be show don't tell yeah because i figured yeah. despite a bit of swearing like there is a little bit of, of smut but like yeah don't need to overdo it i guess yeah in this type of book as well but yeah, that was another qualm. But then, kind of, it also is relevant to Violet's magic because, you know, it's not, it, it's just a part of her. It's not really something she can mm. control. It's its own sort of entity. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It seems like a little bit cringy to me. I don't know. Yeah. But that was just me. It was cringy to me as well. <laughs> I was just like, um... okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so as part of their, like, fake dating agreement or whatever, they have to spend so many, um... Have so many dates a week. And... Yeah, have so many dates a week and, like... Of course, there are rules mm-hmm. <laughs> that are broken. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, they're like, we're not going to have sex. And we <laughs> all know. <laughs> broken. Immediately. <laughs> Immediately. Because they like the part of their rules as well that they're like, oh well, we'll have to you know have PDA um and everything, and they uh go on a date to a restaurant and they run into I don't know someone in the pack, someone that Link knows, and they're like, oh like how embarrassing you're being seen with like the dud Maxwell, the magicless Maxwell, and then they get into a fight, whatever. So then the next time they go to a bowling alley and there's heaps of people around, and then Violet's like, oh you could kiss me here or whatever, and he doesn't, so yeah, they go back to her um apartment and then it, he's like oh yeah like i wanted to kiss you like when no one was watching or whatever like i wanted to just be alone and mm-hmm. it's like okay well you're in love with her like <laughs> yeah yeah immediately <laughs> Immedi- oh, but that's always happens in these types of arrangements i guess yeah but what i found about this sort of 
fake dating situation different than the others is because or the other books that we've kind of read is because it's they've had a past history like i was not expecting that at all a lot of other fake yeah. dating trope scenarios is either they're like, like they're strangers. Mutual, strangers or like mutual friends acquaintances or like colleagues mm. but of course everyone has to have get something out of it because it benefits them both in some way yeah. but yeah i just found it that the bit of extra intrigue because of their past history and like how are they going to act towards each other yeah because we know violet is still a bit like angry and heartbroken by what lincoln did but again the frustrating thing is he can't tell her yeah and she's very much like yeah i can't be open with you because i can't trust you yes and trust again big theme in the book because she can't trust lincoln she can't trust her magic she's the whole book is her trying to learn and how to deal with all this and trust herself so mm -hmm. but yeah that's what i found interesting about the fake dating as like a, a genre is the past lover yeah. aspect how did you feel about the um the kids community center little subplot i thought it was cute i thought it was cute i also thought it was irrelevant sorry <laughs> <laughs> that's okay why, why was it irrelevant i just think it was another way to get them to like spend more time together because then there was all this like hype about the camping trip that they're going on and then the camping trip was a fade to black yeah yeah and i was under the impression that potions up was her only job i didn't realize i didn't get that she was like a volunteer at like a community yeah. center either so yeah i was very it was much much of a what's going on when mm -hmm. the, that scene first or that area was first introduced yeah and now that I think about it, it seems a little kind of weird, like, because Violet is inherently disrespected, as we've established, because of the whole magic list thing. And she's disrespected by a bunch of shifter kids at the community centre. So, like, why would you volunteer your time to help these people? Yeah, I guess she just loves kids. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I don't know, maybe just gives her something else to do. Maybe she she's just actually, like, a caring person. Yeah. And that type of stuff. Um, I think it's more of a way to... <clears throat> steer clear from like yeah. her mother as well because christina's on on her ass all the time and like she probably feels like she can't do anything yeah. else so why not help some kids yeah that's fair but there's always has to be like that second element in order to bring them closer and bring them together and yeah. something to bond over because then yeah there was a little bit of like politic power play over the community center and like the owner isaac and him getting fired and lincoln kind of taking over you know what another this this book um, really does emphasize everything is easier uh -huh. when you're rich <laughs> and Lincoln Thorne is yes. a rich wolf boy but I think Lincoln also uses this volunteership as a way to kind of yeah rebond with yeah. Violet and kind of reconnect in a proper way as opposed to just like conveniently meeting up in all yeah. these places it seemed it seemed mm. organic but yeah again being the alpha he kind of oversees yeah. kind of everything in this society but of course you know the the stereotypical like rich thing or rich person thing to do is like over overtake you know ownership of whatever the main character is yeah. involved with so i found that a little annoying stereotypical i guess yeah but it was fun i yeah i i liked it as it was like oh like look lincoln's good with kids violet's good with kids but then uh, yeah i don't i didn't like the added extra politics of it i was just like this making no sense to me but it, it was ultimately the, the defining factor that swayed one of the elders or one of the pack members as well yeah. that he's trying to sway. Like, oh, he's good with kids. He doesn't do this for po professional political attention. Like, yeah. His volunteering isn't in the papers or anything like that. He's doing it out of the goodness yeah. of his heart. So, um, so therefore, he's a genuine guy and we should believe in him and believe in whatever he's yeah. trying to achieve. So I suppose that's... But, like, it's a very long kind of round trip in order to get to yeah, that point. Yeah, and, uh, and I don't know if it could have been, like, an off-screen moment where they could have just mentioned, oh, like, Violet uh, volunteers here, and then Lincoln's like, oh, like, I'll come and volunteer, and then, like, that person could have come in and been like, oh, did you know that he does this? Like, like I don't know if we yeah, needed yeah. chapters dedicated to it. I feel like, also, would the kids tell their parents, like, oh alpha thorn helps like i mm. played with alpha thorn today like or alpha thorn taught me yeah. how to fly or shift or whatever like yeah i don't know the, the kids have strict yeah. ways than ndas <laughs> it's fantastic but yeah i suppose yeah that extra politics again with those shifter kids who were kind of mm. bullying vi which is very weird for kids but like she has no powers yeah. like, there's nothing she can do um and like the whole 
also stereotypical rich type of oh I donate to this place yeah and so I can get I away can with it, yeah. whatever I want I can take advantage of situations and then I suppose Lincoln again being his motivation is to try and relinquish those types of ideas and beliefs it's probably um, yeah extra reasoning in order to step in and then re uh, retain that sort of volunteering mm. attitude as well so uh, yeah I mean it could be it could have had less yeah. and then the they book, decided but... to up the stakes and were like let's set a fire in the warehouse where the kids are playing I know and then and then no and then none of them die <laughs> like... it's like okay if you're gonna do it at least like kill someone off <laughs> In the end, it's all about, you know, how, how Vi can help and how Vi can use her new newly formed magic in order to save the day. Even though, like, it was then said that Rose did Yeah, it. because... And then I, I didn't know why. Oh, because if the council finds out she has magic, they'll force her to get a witch one. Yeah, she'll be witch <laughs> If the men find out, we can shapeshift. <laughs> <laughs> they'll call the church. I think yeah, but that was just, like, a whole thing, yeah. and, I like, again, just, like, miscommunication things, and you know how I feel about miscommunication. Yeah. Um, I hate it when it's, like, obnoxious to the point where, like, you could just explain yeah. yourself, and yeah. it'll be fine. But I did enjoy the amount of angst in this book, though, again, with the whole, like, we know yeah. that Riley can, can't reveal the truth, and it's very, like, ugh. Did you? But it's great. Think, like, uh, sorry. Spoiler alert, Lincoln and Violet turn out to be true mates. We've been new. I <laughs> We've been new. started to suspect that, like, oh, like, her magic comes out around him. Like, and I was like, oh, yeah. that has to mean something. Did you catch on to that as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah very early. Even when, it, for him, for Lincoln's described, like, his wolf kind of comes out or, like, kind of reacts mm. to the magic as well. I'm like, yes, yeah, comes up. But I loved how when Violet went to her grandma and she's like, have you ever seen yeah. Violet sex? <laughs> It was just so blunt. And it's it was like, just so uh... funny. <laughs> it's like, yeah. what? <laughs> so yeah, even then, like that really solidified it yeah. for me as well. But yeah, anytime she was around Lincoln and the magic kind of, yeah, yeah. pulsated and stuff and manifested. That's yeah, when I was I knew. like, oh, that is so interesting. I wonder what is happening there. <laughs> so Violet's magic, it's because she's been magicless, I think, since forever. And the reason why she has been un unable to manifest it is because of like, she doesn't, well, in the end, it's like she hasn't been able to trust herself or, like, accept it as its own thing. I initially thought it must have been the trauma of the yeah. heartbreak. Yeah, and then I thought it was, like, a mate thing. Like, oh, because she hasn't been around her mate, it's kind of been dormant and just waiting. But Edie was like, it's because, like, they weren't ready yeah. when they were younger. But like, I feel like she still could have had a little bit yeah. of semblance of magic in, like, leading up. But, oh, well, it's just not fair. <laughs> But yeah, I thought, yeah, the heartbreak is what really made mm. it extra dormant. I know, I didn't really explain, explain it that well. I mean, this is like one last stop over again. Yeah. Like, I don't care about the science or the law. Yeah. It's like, I'm glad it happened. I don't care. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little lost. Yeah, uh, I'm a little lost. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I also really enjoyed that the, the sisterly love and bonding as well between mm. Rose and Olive and Vi. Because there were moments, because Rose ends up yeah, stepping down as Primer, yeah. apparent, because once she realises Valentine I enjoyed is a this wit. sister dynamic as a triad, as opposed yes. to other uh, trios of sisters that we have seen. I was like, it's just, <laughs> yeah, this is it's a much just healthier girls supporting relationship. girls. Yeah, and like, there's no jealousy with Rose being like, oh, so you have magic now, now I have no mm. stake in society as well. Like, there they could have very much been like yeah. a jealous moment or like a, a jealousy of power struggle, but no, Rose is like, yeah, I don't want to yeah. do this, you go for it. And then Olive's just the, the book nerd yeah. who's able to save the day. We love that. Um, and just like Vi's friendships with Harper and Bax. Harper yeah. is a succubus, which is interesting. She's like, they call her like the, the virgin succubus or something. And then Bax is like yeah. a guardian angel, um, which is cool in terms of like the different species in this. Yeah, and again, we love books. I love books. Um, that the supernatural worlds exist coerciously with the normal world. And it's in like modern kind of time, and there's a lot of modern yeah. references as well. There's references to yeah, like Stranger yeah. Things, Star Wars, something <laughs> else, which uh, escapes me. But yeah, yeah, it's just so fun and oh, very enjoyable. So yeah, throughout the course of the book, back to the plot a little bit, um, yeah, Lincoln and Violet, you know, organised to go on dates. Um, Violet has like a, a la Princess Diana moment mm -hmm. with some paparazzi and she's taken to hospital. But the only stereotypical thing about this is like the, 
the alpha wolf kind of possessiveness. Like, I know, you know, they're in a fake dating scenario and that they have, you know, been together in the past, but it's like, relax. You don't have yes. to be super possessive. <laughs> but then I think that, that was because, like, of the mating stuff that they didn't really know. Perhaps. Yeah. Perhaps, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think Edie said to him, like, do you get aggressive, like, or, like yeah. not, like, around her, but yeah, yeah. in order to protect her. And he's like, yes. And she's like, well, there you go. She's like, wake up, son. Um, and, like, Edie, like, she is the, like, yeah. the fairy godmother, you know. I like, love she, how she, she knows the answers. She pops up at the Violet right time. Bay. She's like, listen, yeah. Bay. <laughs> very hip. It's like, yeah, very much grandma trying yeah. to stay relevant. Stay young. <laughs> yeah. Picking up the young slang. And also interesting, yeah, thing about this book is like, like the the characters aren't teenagers and they're not like young adults. They're like yeah, adults, they're like, like experienced adults year olds. in life. Yeah, oh, we're gonna be thirty soon, soon. in oh, no. several years. <laughs> Less than several, hey, but I'm still. still. <laughs> <For now. laughs> but yeah, so that's very interesting because yeah, you get a lot of this type of genre in like very young people perspective, whether it be like teenagers or yeah, very young adult mm. college student ages. Yeah, no, it was very interesting that it was, like, they're all proper adults mm. with proper jobs and proper responsibilities, and they know what they want in yeah. life. It was great. Back to Princess Diana paparazzi <laughs> moment. Um, I thought Violet was going to have more of an issue with that, but that kind of just... I also thought that she would have, like, more injuries. Yeah, because she, like, flung mm. off her bike and into perhaps being inherently supernatural. But, like, once again, give me some stakes. capabilities. <laughs> I mean, the stake was she's gonna she's gonna be forced to be yeah, married to somebody. But like, like that's, that's, a, that's a pretty fair stake. <laughs> you you want some injury makeouts? Yeah. <laughs> Violet experiments with her magic. Um... Oh yeah, let's let's talk about uh, like, it co coincides with like the sisterly bonds and stuff. Um, Olive and Rose, and with the help of Harper and Bax, they try and help Violet regain a bit of control yeah. about, with her magic, try and learn to see how it manifests, when it manifests, and like what even powers she's able to do. Um, so that's that's fun. They have a little boot camp experiment. I thought that was going to be more of those montages. Yeah, same, but it was just like one well. time. <laughs> it was a one three hour yeah. stint. Holiday, holiday, okay, holiday. Well done. That doesn't mean Violet had didn't have any other like mishaps yeah. with her magic. Um, she, very early on in the book, she managed to put like... Yeah, with no memories when he woke up. Which was very funny. Yeah, it was, it was very funny. Because um, she's all like, I yeah. just killed the alpha. I, uh, once again, it yeah came down to Edie being like, you need to trust yourself, like, blah, blah, and your magic isn't a separate entity, your magic is a part of you. But also, uh, where was this 20 years ago? <laughs> yeah, yeah, where yeah. was this when you were growing up and your sister's yeah. had magic and you don't? <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's just like... They're just, a, a, they're willing to accept yeah. who she is, perhaps, as the magical switch, and she didn't use it, never used it yeah, against which... her. She didn't want to probably give them, she probably just didn't know, she didn't want to give her false hope that, oh, yeah. one day you might have magic, it might yeah. pop up. I just want to know, yeah, what the catalyst was for it to begin manifesting itself. Perhaps it's just, again, the, the eye yeah. of destiny, perhaps. It's like, it's it was not meant to happen when she was young, yeah. it's meant to happen now. Again, this is why I thought the heartbreak is what kind of, like, caused yeah. it to, because even in their young mm. relationship... Lincoln's dad mm. never approved of her, and so it was always a very- it seemed very secretive. It came across to me that Rose, Olive, Harper, and Bax never knew about her relationship with Lincoln, like, in the young years. Oh, it came I across just that think way. that they were like, oh, it's irrelevant. Because they- I think at one point, like, they were talking about it. But again, like, they- I guess, yeah, Rose and Olive is a bit weird, but, like, Harper and Bax she might not have known them, so. Perhaps, yeah, because, I don't know, it just seemed- it would have been a big secret yeah. to kind of keep- but, like, I feel like Violet's very good at holding... She is very good at holding grudges and, like, yeah, keep yeah. minding her business. I read a review, though, sorry, that said that, like, Violet never finds out why Lincoln left her. And it's like, yes, she, yeah, does. she does. Yeah. Maybe they never finished the book. Yeah, true. Nope. Because, like, yeah, I feel like it was heading that way. It was almost like, well, he, he can't undo the hex. He's never going to be able to tell her, and they're just going to end up happily Yeah, well, I thought somewhere. it might just get to a point where she's like, it doesn't matter, I love you, you love me. Yeah, what's in the past what's is in the, the past. past. Is the past. I'm sorry. <laughs> but then, I don't know, I feel like the whole, the true mateship magic is what undid it. Yeah. I feel like it was a bit of a cop-out. Yeah. As well. <laughs> just, back, just, back, just back with Violet's magic incidents, there was a, like, a bar oh, yes. brawl as well. More so towards the end of the book. And she, it's with some, like, bachelors and, you know, they're at, she's working at a bar and, of course, Lincoln and Bax, they're the overprotective 
supernatural yes. assholes that they are. But yeah, there was a, a bar brawl, and she, I think she like lifts them all up, or she I just think she like explodes, explodes the bar. The, yeah, the bar. Not like fully, but like I think like I imagine it like a big like wind force field kind of yeah, and so like furniture yeah. and stuff goes yeah everywhere. Um, because what no one's listening to her and telling them to like yeah, well they're being up talking um, and like stop a bit doing. forward, and then Lincoln comes over because it's his territory. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, she, and she's she like, like let it go, and he's like I can't. <laughs> And then they end up in yeah. with the police and stuff. How like it's just a funny, you know, setting in my mind that you are supernatural beings. You are the alpha of your shifter supernatural community, and the human yeah. police lock you away. I get they're not above the law. <laughs> or I, I assume. Yeah. I assume human, but yeah, yeah. It's just so oh, so funny. Like the supernaturals could completely eradicate the human population if they really wanted to. But yeah. Oh well. Yeah, it's just funny. And like yeah, just. Even throughout the book, you know, making jokes or like dog analogies or shif- relevant shifter analogies towards them as insults. Yeah. It's just so funny and so fun. Some of them were yeah. a little bit cringy, but it's all right. Like, I think when Rose threatened um, Valentine, like, I'm going to like neuter your cat or neuter your pussy or something like that. Yes, 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 funny. yeah. So good. Because he's a tiger. He's a tiger king. Yeah. Also, a tiger king. <laughs> when you think of tiger king, <laughs> it was like, no. <laughs> I didn't want mm. this relevant information. Perhaps we should talk about the downfall of their plan. Because their plan is seemingly working. Yeah, they're they swiveling moved on in by. together. Also, though, like, if you're in a fake dating position with someone and you're like, oh, we have to move in together, I would not legitimately move in. I would, like, stage it as though I'm moving in. Here's some old clothes that I don't wear anymore. Like, if you're fake dating and oh, like right, aren't right. in a relationship quotation marks let me just come live with you i suppose lincoln's reasoning is like she needs yeah. to be seen leaving to and from yeah. his place and like he did agree but to it's like also it okay house. okay but like it does he have a spare room that she could have like stayed in like why does he yeah. have it because there's a whole yeah. thing about like how it's their wardrobe like their clothes are together and like obviously they're in love with each other at yeah. this point but yeah, I get it. They're, they're obviously, you know, they break their own rules, they, they're crossing each other's sort of, like, yeah. fake dating boundaries, and it's all melting, everything's yeah. all blurring <laughs> together. But yeah, they're definitely yeah. in love. Lincoln and Violet go to go to Australia, yes. I, yeah. I, I just yes. love that room for us, you know? Um, <laughs> they are going to a council, either a councilman or an elder, I forget. It was a ca- council Benson? Councillor Benson? Yeah, someone, it was the, so... I forget. Yeah, Benson is an elder i think and then it was their grandson's first birthday yep so they've gone to a party because you know all the alphas are gonna be there but that also means yeah. rose is there Engaged. because she is you know in a witch bond agreement yes to valentine and so lincoln and Vi are there they're hanging out having fun uh violet goes to help rose because rose seems upset or something's not right with rose because she is having second thoughts about becoming yes. the primary parent as we've established, and she doesn't want to be in the bond with Valentine because he's an arsh yeah. asshole. Yes. So Violet steps away for like a moment. A moment. That's all it takes yeah. is a moment to fuck everything up. He could have. Uh, he could have kept his mouth shut, but he didn't. So Lincoln, thinking he's talking to Adrian in the privacy of a fucking like ball ballroom they're on the or beach. lounge or whatever, oh, on the beach. Yeah, it's a beach party. Of course, stereotypical Australia. <laughs> We're not always. We're not living on a beach. But yeah. Lincoln is talking to Adrian about how he's going to step down from the council because by this point as well, Valentine had been nominated to take his seat because Valentine wants to keep, you know, the old systems and beliefs and to remain. I don't think, the- yeah, he wasn't like, it wasn't an official nomination. It was just like people were like, well, we don't yeah. like the way you're doing things. So if you, yeah, we, we, we'll usurp you for him. <laughs> yeah, there's a due process in the nomination yeah. as well. But yeah, so that's happening. So then Lincoln reveals to Adrian, his second in command, what he has with Violet now is a complete ruse. They're trying to trick each other's counsel. Yeah, or like on. trying to lengthen the timelines. And Adrian overhears it and wants to start some trouble. And so they get into like an unofficial blood match is what's described. Yeah. I forget who gets Rose, uh, who gets Violet, but... I think she just senses it. I know her bodyguard senses it. Yeah. And he, he's acting weird. But anyway, someone gets Violet and they run and, yeah, uh, Lincoln's in an unofficial blood match, which is ironic considering that's something he wants to abolish. Yeah. Not that he actually fought. I don't know if he, like, went in to it as, like, a blood match. He just, like, started a fight. 
Like he threw a swing yeah. and then like it escalated from that point. Valentine and Lincoln are fighting along the beach. Blah blah blah. I I think they're in sh- the shifty the shifted form. So a tiger versus a wolf. Yeah. And then Lincoln has Valentine's jugular in his in his mouth and stuff. And he I think for the rats of the blood match, like you have to like kill. Yeah. So yeah, it's he two do walk in and one walk out. So he doesn't kill Valentine, which I would have given him every right to. Yeah, do I'd be like, yep. Um, and then. I think Lincoln shifts back, or they both shift back. Then Lincoln turns to Violet, and then this is where Valentine starts running his mouth, being all like, oh, we know it's all a ruse, you know, the, that big revelation spiel. Yeah. And then Violet's upset because he didn't, she didn't know that Lincoln was going to resign from the council seat anyway, and or just accepts that he's going to accept a mate from the Elder, mm-hmm. which obviously makes her incredibly upset. So she's walking away. He tries to chase after her. She magically blasts him like 20 feet, which is fantastic. Yes, she's like, and then it's like, oh, cat's out of the bag. I have magic. Yep. So now every everyone knows kind of everything. Everything is fucked. Yep. But yeah, I, it was just heartbreaking because Lincoln's just like, you know, dropped to his knees watching the love of like his life walk away because yeah. he fucked up again. Yes. One too many chances, my guy. Yeah. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice. No, fool <laughs> me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Yes. And then also there's a cheeky moment where Valentine was going to take a swipe at Lincoln, and this is where Rose saves his life, which is fantastic. And then Rose declares that she is stepping down as Prima apparent, um, is withdrawing from the witch bond, mm. which is fair enough. And also while this whole thing is happening, Olive is like trying to figure out if there's like a loophole into the witch bond yeah. law for, in terms of firstborns. So that has been happening throughout. But yeah, Violet, heartbroken again upset and Lincoln incredibly fucked fucked up the situation yeah he of course because of course he's a man and there's no communication and like if they had not just spoken to each other um before Australia and been like hey look these are my feelings for you these are my feelings yeah, for you we... these are my feelings for you blah 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 like yeah let's sort this out <laughs> and this is where like yeah Edie has the inkling that they're true mates because of all the sex that they've had all the to this and all the magic yeah, all the magic <laughs> sex <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um so everything is a little bit more intensified i guess when you're a true mates but they don't know yeah. that so yeah, that was fun that was heartbreaking but we've been new mm. it was gonna happen there always has to be a sort of catalyst for this type of thing yeah there has to be a breakdown sorry yeah and they go back but violet gets back earlier or whatever goes back to her apartment and like her friends have already gotten all her staff back yeah what yeah solidarity yeah what love, like, love I- and support. we love that <laughs> Yeah, a, a real supportive network. And, yeah, like, they could, like, try and convince her to give him another chance type of thing. Or they could um, talk shit on Lincoln, but they don't. They're just, they're just there to support their friend. Yes. And it's great. As much as there's a lot of, like, annoying banter between them all. Not that it annoys me, but just, like, any, you know, friends, you know, annoy and yeah. bully each other. Fun friendship love like that. Yeah. Um, and then I think a couple of days later, Violet is called to a council meeting, and this is like an, more of the big revelations of of the book because it always has to happen. Yeah, and because the council are like, well, we know that you have magic. <laughs> so which bond now, please? Yes. So, but even just before that, uh, Edie visits Lincoln because fairy godmother, she knows the answers and she you know opens up everybody's perspective. Yeah. She visits Lincoln and. They have a nice, nice chat, but she's talking as like a grandmother to the woman he loves, as opposed to like the prime, the witch prime. Yeah, she's like, I'm figure. coming. Yeah, as a grandma. <laughs> so this is when it's the revelation that they're actually true mates, but we've been new. Yeah, and also like, why did it take? I guess like he, I guess we're starting to suspect, but why has it taken the grandma to come yeah. and be like, how have you not figured this out yet? Yeah. Our, our protagonists are just dumb, dumb idiots in love. Dumb 30-year-old <laughs> They've got the love fog, I guess. They're just really into their feelings. They're just really feeling. Um, yeah. I don't know if it was Edie, but I love the trope where it's like, even though Violet has every right to still be mad at Lincoln, like, I feel like this is a really quick turnaround in her feelings as well towards mm. the end, towards him. But I love the trope where it's like, someone's giving them like a motivated motiva- uh, motivational speech and it's like go get your girl yes i was literally about to say thing. the go get the girl speech <laughs> <laughs> yeah i loved it ate that shit up yeah I chef's kiss that. but yeah as i just said like a bit of a quick turnaround in how violet kind of feels about it but yeah anyway it was fun it was a good chat 
And I think with the book doesn't even talk about Lincoln having like a mother or like his father's dead, which he's very grateful for. Um, so it seems like he doesn't have any other family to turn to as well. So it was a nice pep talk from grandma in law. So the council meeting, doom day for Violet. Yes. Um, council is like pissed because. Yeah, she has magic now, and she's, like, deceived them. And then, like, not two seconds later, Lincoln makes an appearance. Because... Yeah. He's being called in because they're like, you need to get into a mate bond. Oh, no, no, Edie called, tells him to come, but they didn't want him there because his seat is, like, compromised. Oh, yeah. Like, he shouldn't be there. But, um, uh, one of the councilmen says something about the witch bond, about, in terms of firstborn, and then Lincoln's like, alright, show us the definition, or something yeah. like that. Being a, being a bit of a smart ass, but he's right. And so the councilmen get a little bit flustered. And then, of course, Rose and Olive walk in. Yeah. I think with Harper and Bax as well. So everyone strides in to save the day. And there's like an ancient text, a celestial text, proves that the witch bond isn't needed in order for a witch's magic to be stabilized. Yeah. It's just dependent on the person. Yeah, they're just how like, they control it. Joke. So, like, is it. How happy were you with this sort of like a technicality revelation? Was it like a bit of a cop out? Oh, or... uh, yeah, I think it was a bit of a like, I don't think they needed the cop out. Like, they could have just been like, yeah, um, that's fine, but he's my true mate. I didn't even know why they didn't use the true mate thing in order to. It, it, it should have. Oh, f now I fucking don't know what to say. <laughs> um, I, yeah, did it just create like more of a complication being like, oh, look, we found this loophole instead of just being like, you're my mate! Yeah, shouldn't that trump everything else, almost? Because, yeah, yeah, the true mate is the, you know, high defining relationship, like, marital kind of status you can get in this society, like, yeah, surely... Yeah, like the be-all, end-all. Yeah, surely that beats everything, but apparently not. Apparently yeah. not. <laughs> no, I don't know where to go oh, from okay. here. Oh, that's fine. Um, so, shall we talk a little bit about the epilogue? Because that's kind of leading into a different book. Oh, hang on, even just before that, sorry. Oh? Um, <laughs> But yeah, then um, Rose officially steps down as Prime Apparent. Prima Apparent, yep. Edie declares Violet Prime Apparent, Primer Apparent now as well because of her magic and being a firstborn that is now inherently her rights to take that place. Yeah, and she's also about 30 years behind in her training though. <laughs> yeah, I know, like that would suck. But like, I feel yeah, like... Yeah, having to catch up. I feel like she would have observed perhaps a lot from Rose and so she has an idea of what's expected. She does say she'll be an unconventional... Uh, yeah. Primer, so which primer? But yeah. we'll see how it goes. But then after the council meeting, she kind of does a little runaway, and then Lincoln chases yeah. after her. And yeah. this is and then... the declaration of love. Yeah, this is where he reveals everything. Yeah, and she he reveals why he was hexed into silence by his father Gregor. Yeah, and because he can finally reveal that to her because of their true mateship, oh uh, God, that trumps the hex. Yeah, see, I thought that was a little bit of a cop out <laughs> as well. No, like just just the magic. Well, he would have had to put a little bit of work in. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. he put himself into that situation. I feel like it um, would have showed a bit more devotion to her if he somehow figured, it, you know, found a solution to something that he got himself into. Yeah. But to be fair, he did get into it because he wanted to protect her. Because due to the blood um, battles being illegal. Uh, for outside viewership, um, Grigor was gonna, I don't know, have a consequence towards Violet when she witnessed it, so. It was all in the name to protect her in the end, but, eh. I think, and then to protect himself, but. Uh, of course, yeah, yeah. Also, now that I remember, like, there was a lot of alluding that Grigor was, like, abusive, or, like, at least very, like, not a very toxic parent towards Lincoln, and that's very upsetting. Yeah. Um. But of course, you know, Lincoln doesn't show any sort of, like... Because you know how they say, like, if you were bullied, you be kind of become the bully type of thing as well? Yeah. And obviously Lincoln rejects that type of cycle. Um, and, yeah. Um, but yeah, declaration of love, we love it. They live happily ever after. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because like, I guess, yeah, the mate bond is like, oh, we're engaged. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, yeah, it trumps all. But I think they also choose to enter... Because now that she... Violet technically doesn't have to enter a witch bond because the magic doesn't need to be anchored. Um, she's they're doing this willingly, which is also yeah. fun. But it's also like yeah. you've just fought Free for this will whole thing. Free will love. But you've also fought for this thing, and now it's like. Yeah. Ah. But I suppose yeah. this will affect all other witches and stuff in the future for the greater good. So yeah, good outcome ultimately. 
Yeah. So yeah, and then there's like an epilogue, which is fun. Which yeah, because so, us... yeah, this leads us into the epilogue because they're like, let's go celebrate. Yeah, this is pretty much an engagement party as well, if you think about yeah. it. Yeah. Ironic, like start to finish parallel. We love it. Full circle. Yeah. Full circle moment. So the epilogue, yeah, it's pretty much, they're at like a party of sorts and they're mingling, just chatting about like the past events and all that type of stuff. And yeah. then Lincoln's college roommate, Damien, joins the fray. Yeah. And it's alluded that him and Rose know of each other. Yeah. Because Rose is single and ready to mingle now. Mingle. Yeah, she is ready to hit the town, get some D. Yes, and I'm sure, like, Harper will join her in those type of expeditions, being the succubus. Yes. And so, yeah, that illusion sets us up for the next kind of, it's not a sequel, but it's like a standalone series with the relevant characters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not the X U hex or something like that. I forget something like that. Is. Something along, yeah, the hexing of the X or the X U hex, something like that. So, and that will be like Rose's book, I guess. Yeah. Although I really want there to and be. And then maybe we get. Sorry, I think what you were about to say. I think we get. Hopefully, get an olive and um back an olive book one. Yeah, as well. Yeah, because like all the sisters kind of deserve deserve love and. Yeah, it's called not your exes hexes, and it comes out next year. Oh, I thought it was, I was under the impression it was already out. Same. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> I was looking forward to reading it. Oh well, we're gonna have to wait. That's fine. Yeah. We will definitely circle back to this. Yes. <laughs> for sure. But yeah, and th that, that's it for Not The Witchy Wed. Everything turns out well, everyone succeeds, everyone's happy, everyone's in love. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Having a good time? <laughs> yeah, second chance romance, supernatural romance. It's fun, we love it. It's yeah. great. So as always, thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah. Find us at Letterbox Book Club. If you find us in one place, you'll find us in all the places. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for sticking along with us. The next few weeks will continue to be House of Night. House yeah. of Night. Stay with us on that journey. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Catch you next week for Hunted. Yeah, bye. Bye.